Hello? Hi, good morning. Morning. So I'm glad to stand on this stage to share with you all you guys about the things happening in China, especially the PVZ2 things in China. So first, please allow me to propose a few requests, including please turn off your mobile phone or switch to the silent mode and fill in the evaluation form after this session so that I can know how good or how bad I did during the presentation. I want to ask you all of you a question. How many of you come here because you are interested in China market? Raise your hand, please. Well, almost everyone. How much of you, how many of you come here because you are a fan of PVZ? Well, I know that gentleman, he's a big fan of PVZ. He just showed me the picture of his birthday cake. That's a plants zombie, plants versus zombie cake. Very amazing. So I appreciate that. Did you see that? I'm a big fan of that cake. I'm Leo. Previously, I run PopCap China office for three years. Now I run the EA Mobile China. So PopCap is a part of EA Mobile now. So when we talk about China market, everyone knows there is a huge population in China, 1.3 billion. But when we talk about Asia today, 2014, Asia is the biggest market for mobile in terms of revenue. So in 2014, the forecast revenue is 12 billion US dollars. It's bigger than the combination of the United States and the rest of the world. Asia is much bigger. Korea, China, Japan, all together, combined all together is 12 billion. So when we talk about Japan, it's number one in Google Play and number two on iOS. China, number three on iOS, and then number four on Android, because there is no Google Play there. So I put an Android logo instead of Google Play. But in China, there are more than 300 app stores regarding the uh, Android in China market. It's very much different. The career market, it is pretty much the Android market. Those three countries represent the growth of Android and the growth of the mobile market in Asia area. This is the China specific number. This year, we are looking at 1.5 billion US dollars revenues from China market. It is the lowest forecast for China market. If you are searching from the internet, you will probably find 30 reports giving you different data about China. The range is from 1.4 billion up to three billion for China market. Everyone is different. It depends on how you look at China. If you want to be exciting about China, just pick the biggest number. If you are going to China market, doing a business plan, I suggest you to use a conservative number. That will give you a better strategy and give you a good start point. Even to this year, China market is already a big market, but in terms of growth rate, it's more than 100%. This is also a medium forecast for the growth rate of about China. Some high numbers could be 150%, some low number could be 40%. It depends on how you look at numbers and how you filter the junk data from the whole report. Next year, we are looking at, this year we are looking at at least a three billion market for, from China. And every year the growth rate is there. Moving forward, the growth rate down from 100 to 40 something. And not because the market is real going down, the growth rate, it's just because the mobile market in China is changing so rapidly. We just put a number there instead of giving a huge number. This is the highlight for the China market. Everyone knows China market is different, but how different it is, 
I will use PBZ2 as a case study to share with you what's, what is the thing happened to Popcat China and to EA China. And China is a three billion US dollars market, as I mentioned. Local companies and local games are the winner in China market. If you look at the top 10, top 20, probably all of them are local games or local companies. EA Mobile, probably the only one among the top 10 game com mobile game company in China. All the rest, nine or 19, are local companies. There are some games doing good in the China market on iOS, Clash and Claims. But overall, when we talk about the, over, the whole market, Android plus iOS, local companies always win. Android users generate more than 60% of the total revenue. Android overtake the marketplace with iOS. Even in China, tier one city, when you, went to, when you go to the tier one city, Shanghai, Beijing, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, you will see iPhone is very popular. But if you just go inland for 100 kilometers, Android is the dominant. And many people are still using the feature from these days. 100 RMB, 200 RMB, that's the minimal requirement for a phone. And also, Android phone, the price is going down rapidly. Two years before, five, for three years before, it's 2,000 RMB, 300 US dollars phone. But now, it's between 100 and 150 US dollars for Android phone. That increased the install base for the Android phone in China. And in terms of the genre of the games, the trade, trading card games and action games is the dominant in China. But when you look at the game type, you will find many RPG elements inside the game. And many of these inspiration was got from the MMORPGs and web games from the China market in the previous. This is the channel and the platform segmentation for China market. On the left, there is iOS, represent 33% of the total market. But even on iOS, Close to 40% of the market share was dominated by the jailbroken, which is not reported in the APP any or any other report. But in China, we know there is a huge market. And on Android, there are more than 300 APP stores, app stores in China, represent 43% of the total market. I cap out the WeChat because this is an emerging app store, just happened last year and open to the third party end of the last year. This is an uncertain element for the China market. It could be very huge. When we look at a career market, Kakao take the majority of the Google Play. On, in China, the thing is happening. Next, I'm going to share with you guys on the case, a case study of the PBZ2 in China. This is an image, a combination of the images we created in China, including the Kung Fu Master zombies and some of the peach as plants. This is a timeline for PBZ2 launch in China. Some of them you are very familiar with. For example, the soft launch in New Zealand and Australia date back to July 9th. And also the soft launch for China and, how, and the grand launch for China. So I'm using a timeline, storyline, to tell you about what things happened in the China market. PBZ2 iOS soft launch in Australia and New Zealand on July 9th. July 9th. That's only happened in New Zealand and Australia. But in two hours, the first pirate version of PBZ2 English version launched in China market. That's the, in the jailbroken channels I just showed. And in 24 hours, the first cracked version, the cracked means unlimited gold. Someone help us to crack the game and launch it in China market less than 24 hours. I'm so amazed by their efficiency of their engineer and the game designer. And just in five days, six million downloads from China only. That's a huge number. If we, 
any of the game have six million downloads, that would be amazing. But only from China, only from the pirated channel, only on jailbroken devices, we have six million in five days. It's an opportunity or it's a challenge. We have been discussing this topic when the game launched in New Zealand and Australia. We know PBZ is a huge brand in China. It's even bigger than in US. It's not only the game, it's entertainment, it's lifestyle. This picture is, has no relationship with the game, but it demonstrates how popular the game is in China. It's a lifestyle. People using PVC image to build clothes, to manufacture clothes, and every type of commodity of their lives. And that's why six million downloads in five days from the part of the channel. We look at it as opportunities instead of a challenge. But when we look at a game, the game itself, there is a challenge. We collect the data from the English version soft launch in Australia and New Zealand. We compare the pay rate between the Chinese user and the rest of the world, the user from the rest of the world. We see a huge difference between those two types of users. The global users, the pay rate for the global user is 87 times bigger than the Chinese users. Even Chinese players spend more time inside a game. The pay rate is just lower. But when they pay, the apu is very close. Chinese users and the, the users from the rest of the world, the apu is similar. But the pay rate is much lower. Th that was the situation we were facing at that time, half a year ago. Huge challenge. What do we, what do we need to, to do? Shall we launch the English version in China? Shall we launch a localized version in China? Shall we launch a culturalized version in China? We choose to culturalize the game. The original game is built for the Western market. People love it. But when we launched in China, we made a few modifications of the game, including three-star level. The original game is linear math with some fogs, but actually in China version, when you finished one world, you will see there is a three-star level. The people with expectation to have more difficult of the game, they can, replay, they can repeat the playing a game by challenge with the more difficulty inside a game, but the reward will be higher. And also, we put a unlock plants function inside the game. The, the people will not be able to unlock the plants just by finishing the level. They need to repeat and collect all the pieces so that they can combine together to unlock the plants. And also, we change the game economy loop a little bit so that it can meet the consumption speed of the Chinese users of the game. It depends on the understanding of the Chinese users. We know the Chinese users are result-driven. They carry the result, then the procedure. And they, the content consumption speed is much faster than the Western user. Once they love the game, they will spend 24 hours in the game, just finish the levels, and accomplish the achievement. We know all this happening in China from the history. This is the three star levels. This is the Kung Fu world, the fourth world in the PBZ2 in China version. You see on the left that there is a three star indication. Once you finish the level by passing all the, uh, by, by passing all the levels, you will see three stars there. If you would like to challenge yourself, you can choose to play this mode. Some three stars are very hard, even myself. It took me like 20 times repeating challenge, sometimes I can finish. But this is the fun of the game. If I'm a casual gamer, I choose to just finish the game, not three stars. Sometimes two stars are okay, but three stars is very challenged. This is the reality. So by having this, 
we expand our user segment from the casual gamer to the hardcore user gamer. This is a very suitable for, China, for the China market. Unlock the plan. So the original English version is unlock the plants by passing the level. But in China, people need to defeat the daily yadi so that they can collect the piece and then unlock the plants. In China version, we also introduce a hard currency, which is the diamond in the game. The soft currency will not allow you to buy some of the elements in the game because we know the Chinese users are so used to grain inside of the game. They spend time playing the game repeatedly so that they can collect all the diamonds. They can collect all the gold to unlock the plants and unlock the level, unlock the world. But in China, we need to realize this situation and put a hard currency there so that they can pay to unlock the plants. They are also okay to use the default plants to finish all the levels. In my home, I'm a wear user. I spend money in the game. To some game, I'm, I spend $300, $500, but my wife is a casual game player. She spends time instead of money. So when we play PBZ2, there are two very good examples in my family. I spend money. My wife choose to spend time. Everyone enjoy the game, but in different way. This is the hard currency work in China version. The hard currency can give you the opportunity to buy sun, the coin, the plant's pieces. If you, you are not able to collect all the pieces, for the last two pieces, you can pay just by the diamond. And the plant food and gesture. These elements you can purchase with the diamond in the Chinese version. The result is PBZ2 reached number one on both top download and top grossing chart in China. The top grossing is after one update two weeks later. That, that update is a very successful update. But iOS is just the beginning. And as I mentioned, Android is the biggest market. And even on iOS, there are something unexpected happened in the China version. The story coming next is very interesting. PBZ2 launched in China July 9th. And just in a f uh, on August 1st, just in a few days, PBZ2 ranking dropped from 5 to 2. Two stars for PopCap no matter for whom, is a nightmare, is disaster on iOS. Is that true? Yeah, I heard the feedback. But this is the chart during that time. That's the top downloaded chart in August. I just pick one day. If you look at the top three, there are three stars, two stars, and 2.5 stars. That's only happening in China. Is that a nightmare? Is that a tragedy? Probably not. If the, all the top three are in the same format, there must be a reason behind. And we have a joke at that time. If any of your game got the rate is higher than three, you are not able to get to the top three. What is the reason behind? Is this game sucks? Is this application bad? No. The third one is the WeChat. We know it has more than 500 million users in China. People love it. And a PBZ, we know it's a decent game. But why it's two stars? Why it's 2.5 stars? The number one game is the first game launch, uh, it's the game launched on WeChat. We know it's a decent game. Why it's three stars? Why? Everyone's curious. I received the emails from the US. My colleague said, what's happening? Why you are two star rating? We will close the game in US. An office will be closed. That's true. 
The first reason is we are late. We were late, yes. The soft launch is in July 9th, but the Chinese version launched on August 1st. Yes, we, are, we were late. People have very high expectation for our delivery, but we were late. But the, the major reason behind is two. One is we prevent the hacking for the game. People are now allowed it to use the cheating tools. So I pick one comment from the review. People said, I, please don't upgrade your game or you will lose all your cheating archive. And give us one star rating. And many of them, them among the reviews are in this format. Is that fair? But it's the reality. You have to admit it's the reality. And there is a, another reason is rating att attack. You know the top grossing and the top downloading chart in China is heavily manipulated. If you look at the top chart, I think more than 70% of the top grossing or top downloading chart is manipulated by the ranking manipulation companies. They pay to get the app to the top. Once PBZ2 launched in China, it grabbed opportunities for these companies to do in business. Because the first day, our download number is 1 million. They cannot beat us by downloading numbers. But they can give us one star rating. That help us to degrade. And also, when Tencent launched their game and their app, they are facing the same challenge. And that's the reason why the top three at that time is two stars, 2.5, and three stars. That's only happened in China. And Apple noticed that, and they cut some of the one-star reviews. They remove it. They remove it not because it's one star. If they give you, if user give us one star rating, and it's true, we respect that. But Apple removed that. Those are the manipulated reviews. They cannot beat us by one million dollars. They can give us, but they can give us 10,000 one-star ratings every day. This is something these ranking manipulation companies, they can do. Once you come to China, you should be open-minded and ready for any kind of tragedy. If you use the American standard to see, oh, this is two-star rating. I did a bad job in building my game. Sometimes it's not true. You build a good game, you got the two stars. Actually, it's a acknowledge of your achievement because the competitors are somewhere in the market a fear of your achievement. But you need to understand the story behind. Today, PVZ2 back to four star plus. That's a regular ranking. But at that time, we need to understand the story behind and we need to prepare for all these challenges. iOS global launch, iOS Chinese launch, but it's also just the beginning. Android. Android is much bigger in China. This is the number for PBZ2 Android launch in China. For 1 million users, it took one year for PBZ1. It took one day for PBZ iOS 2. And just took for one hour for PBZ2 Android. The game launched in September 12th last year. It's such a big hit in the market. It launched on almost every channels in China, 300 stores. We almost cover every channels. Some is direct communication and direct business. Some is just indirect. When we launched Android game in China, the first challenge we faced was the device fragmentation. In China, the device is very fragmented. In US, when I got a spec from my EA friend, there were only 14 devices, the top devices. But in China, 10 times more than that. Some brand you are very familiar with, Samsung, HTC, 
but many of them you have never heard about. Even myself, I never heard about them, but they present a certain percentage of the market. During the first launch, we launched 24 app stores in China for PBZ2, and up till now, after six months, we released more than 600 APKs. Every APKs, they are different. The payment, uh, the, the payment SDKs and some of the content are different. It's a huge amount of work behind. It's done by China team. This is the data give you an idea how fragmented the China market for devices. The top 10 only represent 18%. And the, right, the rest of 82% is by all the other devices. It's very different from the US market. If you look at this slide, you will name some of the channels, the app stores you are familiar with. There is Kakao, there is Line, there is Tencent, and there is Google Play. But huge number in China. I just named some of them. The reality is in China, we have more than 300 stores in China. Everyone makes sense. There is a reason behind. As long as they survive, there is a reason behind. Another learnings we got from launching the PBZ2 in China, and also the PBZ1 game in China is, AAA quality is meaningless if the game cannot reach the users. Let me explain this a little bit. When you look at a chart, you will see once you increase the, the size of your boot, you, redu you reduce your business increase, in, instead of increasing your business. It seems too weird. Why? I'm increasing my quality. The graphic, the sound, the font. Yes, that's true. But having a bigger size in the client it reduces the capability of the game to reach users. Many of the users today, they don't have Wi-Fi. They have data package. Their data package varies between 5 megabytes a month or 200 megabytes a month. So that means if you are launching a 1 gigabyte game, it took them 5 months to download the game. Were people to do that? Probably not. The PBZ2 APK when we launched the game is only 32 megabytes. We took out a lot of things. If you look at from the Western perspective, it is, is a, it is an action to lower the quality. Yes, the graphic is a little bit worse. The sound, a little bit less. The font, we remove most of them, just keep three fonts in the game. But the reality is every time we shrink the build, the download size increase. Our mentality is we just make sure this is the best game that people can download from the internet and they can play it on their devices. The remedy memory is the bottleneck for many of the low-end devices. If we provide the users with a AAA game, but with one gigabyte client size, it cannot reach them, it cannot install on their devices, or it cannot run on their, dev their devices. At that time, quality means nothing. It's only pain ass. People look at a logo, a description, it's a good game, but they cannot play it. They will be frustrated. And also, we use local billing for the users to pay for the game. It's not the way you're familiar with, the credit card. Many of the users have the credit card, but they, don't, they are not used to use credit card to play a casual game. They use SSM billing. SSM billing is very popular and very convenient in China. People just need to have two clicks, and the bill will go to their phone bill. It's very easy. It can happen in two seconds. No password is needed, no username, it's so easy. When we launch a lot of div, uh, different APKs, we must have a capability to automate it, generate our build, 
and do the QA testing. If we do everything manually, we must build a 500-man team in China for PVC2 only. But the reality is we developed a tools to compile and build and develop a QA process to make sure the builder can have a smoke test automated. Those are the launch for the PBZ2 i Android. Actually, the, big, the biggest thing happened for the PBZ2 in China is the Kung Fu World launch, which is the, a new map developed in China. When the game launched in January 23rd this year, it reached the top in the revenue history. Please allow me to show a movie of the Kung Fu World and then you can understand what is the image looks like inside a game. The story behind the PVZ2 is the time traveling. Mr. Crazy Day traveled from different worlds. They came, he came to China. You should be familiar with this scene. It's tied to you.
to come forward. So we put a QR code. Once people love the game, they can download the game directly. So we know local content is very attractive to the local users. These are the characters we created in the China market. You will see Kung Fu Master Zombie, and you will see Drunk Monk Zombie as well. It's such a popular image in China. Every Chinese people can recognize it in one second. And this is the screenshot that we collect from the game. You will see how hot the game is. And I will use data to demonstrate how the local content is popular in China. This is the games played in the game. The Egypt is the top. The reason is because you must finish the Egypt level and then you can unlock the rest of the world. But the Kung Fu world, even if it is the fourth world, it launched the latest, it ranks number one among all the three rest uh, worlds. The Pirate of Caribbean, the Cowboy, the West, the, the Wild West. Kung Fu world in China is the top. So we learn a lot of things in China. The game, the build size, the local billion, and how to defeat the ranking manipulation. This is a, a, this is a unique case. But actually behind, there are millions of lessons we learned from the China market. Because the market is so different, we must be prepared for anything unusual from the Western perspective, and then we also be entrepreneurship enough in China market. The strategy I adopt in China market is run fast in small steps. And sometimes we use the strategy as shoot and aim. Before we got to know the realities, we need to do the test. Use scientific word, it's called A-B testing. But actually, in China we call shoot and aim. It looks weird, it sounds interesting. But when you look at all these puzzles, it's the learning we collect from the China market. But the most important, I would like to emphasize, the game is built by the team, by the people, by the talent. It's not a software only. It's a software, but there are many creativity inside of the game. So I would like to emphasize the most important thing is the team. Once you have a team with passion about the game and with entrepreneurship and had an understanding of the China market, and then they can win. Some of the China, China folks come from China to join my session. If you have questions, we are happy to answer any of your questions. <laughs> Oops, I don't mean that. So let me know if you have any questions. So I have a question about the ranking attack or ranking and manipulation, uh, manipulation. So you mentioned that, but it looks like the rating just goes back to the normal rating by itself. So you don't have to do anything, you just wait. Is that the way you handle that? Or there is something you have to do to make it right? Uh, it depends. For example, PVZ2, we just, do, we just wait. But behind that, we do a lot of communications with the media, with Apple, and with our mother company in the U.S. Because, excuse me? You mean, you mean with the competitors directly? We don't communicate with them directly. They don't have a visible in the market. But for a independent developers, I think you need to do things to overcome this obstacle instead of waiting. If you just wait there, you will be die. Okay, thanks. Thanks. I have a question. Thanks. It's fabulous. I know there's a, a lot of us that are super fans, so it's really great to, to see this and, and learn more about it. Um, Zach Kwan from Warner Brothers. Question was, uh, obviously there was a huge changeover in the design of the game uh, a few months back. Just wondered if you could talk about that a little bit, if that was 
from a global perspective or was it because of things you saw in particular markets, whether it was China or U.S., and just kind of what you were tracking, testing, looking at from a data and design standpoint? So some of the ideas before the game launch is from the learning and understanding of the China market. It's not from the testing. But once we launch the game, or before we launch the game, usually we do A-B testing, as I mentioned. So the good thing for China is we can easily to do A-B testing to launch the game in different channels. We have 300 channels in China. We can easily release three different builds a day to test three different areas of the game. This is the good side of the China market. And also by having this, we can manage our content appropriately. Just instead of releasing, to having no idea. We do everything, almost everything, A-B testing in China build. Hi, my name is Wei. Um, I have a question about the pirated and cracked copies of Plants vs. Zombies. Okay. So were these distributed on the Android um, channels, like the normal Android channels um, in China? Um, Actually, the very first build was iOS from Android, uh, from uh, Australia and New Zealand. People just pulled the game from the App Store and launched in the jailbroken channels in China. But the one thing I didn't list it there is just in, I think in seven days, someone helped us to build an Android version, even before our Android launch. It's based on the iOS version. Do you guys take any legal proceedings to try to prevent the piracy? Legal? You mean legal action? Yeah, legal action. No. <laughs> so that, that gave money to the lawyers. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, can you tell us something more about the automated uh, testing on the devices, on the Android devices? Okay. Thank you. So we write a script by ourselves and using PC as a as a server to work with different devices, make sure they can launch the game. But automated testing is not a, like I can do a full testing. It's just for a smoke test. Install the game, launch the game, and create the game, and maybe create a character. That's, per, uh, that's pretty much for the automated testing. The, the basic functionalities were um, tested and you were open to the possibility that minor things were not working properly in some devices. Right? Of course. Of course, only by automated testing we cannot have a full test. There must be a manpower behind the full QA testing period. So we have this kind of procedure. Make sure the automated testing can give us ability to run the first first level of testing. And then for the full game testing, we will use people to run the testing case. Thanks. Hey, um, thanks for the talk. I'm Phil. Um, two questions. I know it's a bit cheeky. Um, first off, um, about could you talk a bit more about carrier billing and how you actually go about establishing that? Do you have to um, get, actually agree like one-on-one -on -one contracts with each of the carriers? or Just so talk a little bit about that, please. And oh. secondly, about the um, process for releasing these other Android app stores, do you need, um, do they all have separate submission processes? Um, do you need to build actually like separate builds for each one of those stores? Thank you. Okay, good question. I think you are interested in launching your game in China. How to collect money and how? Good question. So local billing, uh, the carrier billing is very important to the casual game, especially like a single player game like a PBZ2. Uh, we have three carriers in China. China Mobile, China Unicom, and China Telecom. A any of them make sense to us. China Mobile is the biggest. And every carrier, they have a two different divisions. They fight hardly internal. They are enemy. They are enemy of different carriers, but also they have a two different BUs inside. They are also enemies as well. So you need to appropriately deal with them. You, you Please don't screw up things, otherwise you'll be blocked. Um, the local, the carrier bullying is you need to integrate their SDK into your game. And users can easily by having two clicks and pay for the content. For launching the game in different app stores, 
you need their separate SKUs for every app stores so that they, you can track all the payment from the users. Money goes to the app store first or comes to you first and then share with the app stores. It depends on the negotiation between you and the app stores in China. It's a very complicated process. In China, we have competitors, enemies. Some of them, they don't like each other. Some of them are enemy. You have to choose one alliance to work with. This is the China unique things. In US, I think you are okay to work with Google when you work with Apple. But in China, sometimes it's not that the case. Okay. Um, you mentioned that uh, it's common to, uh, for companies to offer purchase downloads and to sort of help apps race up the app store. Mm -hmm. And then a lot of the um, apps have used these process. And we've, we've come into this, uh, we've seen some of this as well. Have you seen anything on Apple's side in terms of preventing this? Or have you had any assistance in um, helping to prevent this? Or do you think this is just going to be um, a facet of the Chinese app store going forward and, and the other stores as well? Okay. I think this question is more suitable for Apple than to us. I just can share you with our learnings from the China market. As I mentioned, Apple helped us to remove some of the one-star ratings. So I know they are doing some things. They're doing this because, not because they think this is a one-star rating. They remove this, they think it's manipulated, or it's fake. But Apple never speak to the public about their actions. This is Apple. But we know Apple is managing the app stores carefully. This is the thing with a healthy ecosystem. But the challenge is, once they have a new rule, people will break it sooner or later. And then there will be a new rule. So this is the game played in the last few years. In the past, people in China, some company just register account and download a game and play the game and then pay for the game. But nowadays, it seems that it's harder to do that. So they, there, is a, there is a mechanism encourage users individually to download and play the game, and then you can get some reward. It's very popular nowadays, but I do think there will be a new method to break all these rules in the coming future. So that's my belief. Thank you. Thanks. Hello. Yeah. Uh, does the Chinese version uh, display ads? And if it does, uh, what's the revenue breakdown there? No, we don't display ads in the current China, Chinese version because the mentality behind the Chinese users, they think this is already a microtransaction game. There is IAP there. If we still display ads, that means double charge users. People don't like this. Thanks. Hi. Um, thanks for a great talk. Um, you said that uh, the most successful genres in China are ARPGs and TCGs. Uh, do you have any advice for developers that um, want to launch the game with a different genre, like simulation games or sports games or whatever? Um, any special advice to, to, to get successful on the Chinese market there? Good question. So the, talking about genre, I just listed the top two genres today. But it does not mean tomorrow. So sports game is not a big category for China market, even in the history. But RPG is big. And also SRG is big in China as well. So if you are developing game, please make sure, first, it's suitable for mobile as a device. So don't put too, many, too much things on a mobile device. That's why some of the sports game doesn't work well on the phone. It, it works well on the pad, but it does not work well on the phone. For example, the, the football game, 11 versus 11, it does not display well on the phone. So once you are developing a game, picking a genre, you need to think about all these restrictions for the mobile game. Thank you. Hi. Uh, for the Chinese-specific content that you guys created, um, I'm curious who actually created the content and how much they worked with the U.S. developers on creating that, and whether that content would ever be coming to the um, U.S. or European markets as well. Good question. So in PopCap, we work in a independent way for the China, uh, China, China studios. 
all the content, content you saw from my presentation regarding the China version was created in the China studio by the Chinese team. Because we know, we understand the China market. We got some uh, hints from the US, but actually we are pretty much responsible for developing and release the content in China. The US people give us feedback, not permission, not approval, because they think you are the expert for China, I'm not. So not necessarily go through me for approval. I, you have my default trust. That's the communication between China team and the US. But once we release something good in China, the US team will take it and release it in the US. So I think some of the content in the coming future will be releasing in the rest of the world. This is a shopping mode rather than a, 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 a selling mode. So the content from China to US is not a by obligation. You must launch in global, no. In China, vice versa, we, are not, we don't have any obligation to take things from the global, which is not working in China and release in China. We only take the things we believe will work in China and modify the rest and launch in China. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Thank you very much for your attending and thank you very much for your time.